chemistry time, <laughs> we're going to learn about ions. So write down ions, please. So, as you remember from your uh, previous lessons, what, what is an ion? How does it differ from an atom? Okay, here's another word. An ion has a... An atom or a bonded group of atoms that have a positive or negative charge. Okay, so we can say an ion has a... Positive. Let's just put charge because it can be either positive or negative, but it can have it has a charge. An ion has a charge. And why would an ion have a charge? What, would, what about the way the subatomic particles are makes an ion have a charge? Due to what? So if it has a positive charge, what do we know about its subatomic particles? What are the subatomic particles? Remind me. Uh, Protons, neutrons, electrons. Good. So if it has a positive charge, it must have more what? Protons. Protons than what? Electrons. electrons. So due to a, we, we can't necessarily say more because we're talking about any charge, but a due what? Due to number of sub Due to a different number, yeah. Due to a different number of protons and electrons. We can't just say subatomic particles. Because that would also include neutrons, with, which don't matter to this at all. They have yeah, they're neutral. So, ions. An ion has a charge due to a different number of protons and electrons. These, when they are ions, they are no longer considered atoms. You should write this down. Um, we've already talked about it in the past, but an atom must be neutral. If it's not neutral, it's called an ion. So, ions can either be positive or negative, and we have different words for them depending on whether they're positive or negative. Do you remember what the words are? It was it's in your vocabulary. A cation. Good. A cation, if it is what? If it's positive. Positive. And, and an anion. anion. Do you an remember the little mnemonic cats I told you? And onion. Yeah. I, the, the joke is that I actually, I do not like cats, but people perceive cats as a positive little thing. And so a cation has a happy little cat. Let's draw the little kitty. Meow. That is a really good cat, if I do say so myself. And look how happy it is. We love the cat. Positive, positive. It's going to be emitting a positive charge. And the onion, I actually really like onions, but the onion is a bad, smelly, negative onion. It's emitting a smell and negative charge. Ew. Cat ion, happy little cat, and ion, smelly, bad onion. Okay? Um, positive and negative charges. That's kind of silly, but that will help you remember it, won't it? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, so why this is the this is the whole gist, and this is the last thing we're gonna talk about. Why? Why do they have a charge ever? Like what? They're just like one day they're like in the same way that we would say, oh I need to go get some sheets from the store. The atom's like, oh I don't need an electron anymore. Is that how it works? No. no. So why? Why do they change charge ever? Well, it's because they're trying to keep a certain number of valence. Exactly. Charge. Why? Because they want uh, a yeah usually almost all of them. We, we say they want a, not one, but they're most stable, most stable Blood atoms, um, well, atom or ions, are most stable with a full valence orbital. Let's put energy level. Orbital is kind of an old timey word. Most stable with a full valence energy level. So for most of them, what is a full valence energy level? We talked about the electric configuration. Yeah, for most of them, it's eight. However, for two elements, it's like a different hydrogen. Level. And? Um. Yep. So for most, um, most elements, that number is eight. But for hydrogen and helium, it is two. We could say... Sometimes we say they're happier this way, that's not true, atoms don't feel happiness. We say they want to be this way, that's not true, they don't have wants or needs. They are most stable this way, that is true. Um, but we sometimes say that they are most stable if they're configured like what elements? Um, stable with the same electron configuration as what elements? Which ones already have eight valence electrons? Noble. Yeah. Noble gases. Let's me the noble gases real quick so I can write them down up here. Um, helium, helium, argon, krypton, xenon, 
Radon. Radon. Good. Those, and there's augenescent counts Wait, too, I guess. What were you talking about noble gases there? Sorry, what? They're stable with the same electron configuration as noble gases. So they, what does that mean, like as noble gases? That, like they, they have the same, so for instance, if we look at um, chlorine, which has an electron configuration of uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, it would be more stable if it was that, but with 3p6, just like our has, right? So, it's, so it's most stable, the closest right. it is to And how, what else can we express how many valence electrons, only valence electrons an element has? With the what kind of configuration? Electron. Electron dot. So we draw chlorine as seven valence electrons, right? And the trick for that is it's in column 17, so it has seven valence electrons. So if it, how many electrons is it going to have to gain or lose to be like a noble gas? One. One. Gain, gain one. Gain one. And that will give it a what charge? Plus one. Negative, right, yeah. one. Negative one charge. And we call this the chloride ion. And it's the same for others. We have an oxide ion. We have a uh, fluoride ion. We change the name of anions to end with ide. We don't change the name of cat. So we have something like an iron ion or a sodium ion. Questions? Bye.